crypto market update i'm the altcoin analyst nothing here is financial advice let's dive in so in this video we're going to look at bitcoin and the halving we're also going to look at some of the inflation data that came in earlier today and we're going to go over some social risk metrics or i also like to use the google search trend interest over time numerical value indicator now with that being said let's get started Next week, we have the halving, which is going to happen on approximately April 20th, 2024. And so normally, the halving is the event that's going to double the Bitcoin price. It's going to set a new floor price. And that sounds good. And normally that does happen. But something that's occurred that we've never seen before is going up and putting in a new all-time high before the halving. Normally, that is after the halving. So what's different this time? Well, is it the spot Bitcoin ETF that launched over here? That could be. Is it people just front running the halving, knowing that the price is going to double, as we say? Sure. Because here's the thing. The across cnbc across all the news networks you're going to get analysts on tv saying well simply if demand stays the same but you cut the supply in half that comes onto the market the price has nowhere to go but to double and so yeah i mean that that makes sense but how do we know that demand is going to stay the same what if demand goes down now what would cause demand to go down well we also know that these spot bitcoin etf holders are going to be sellers in the near future and here's why because a fund or a hedge fund or an institution that's buying the bitcoin spot etf if their portfolio or their allocation of the bitcoin spot etf goes up they're going to have to sell because they're not allowed to have more than x percent allocated to a certain asset and so if you think about if a hedge fund allocates 5% of their portfolio to the Bitcoin spot ETF, and well, it's risen almost, what is that, 60% since then? A little more maybe? Now that 5% is greater than 5% in their portfolio, and they're going to have to sell to bring their Bitcoin exposure back down to 5%. And so here's the other, here's the other thing I want to, kind of bring up here if we have bitcoin correcting at all how many of these institutions that have the bitcoin spot etf are going to get spooked and sell because they're no different than you or i in terms of market psychology they just have a lot more money under their that they are managing and so just because they are labeled an institution it doesn't make them better traders they still go through the same market psychology that normal retail does as well so will the bitcoin having push us up yes i think long term it will however and and i want to define that long term i think probably in 2025 we're going to feel the effects of the having and the price will go up but in the short term i think that with the inflation data that came in the risks of a recession are, I think, elevated, more elevated than they were previously. So, yes, I believe that the having will have a positive effect on Bitcoin, but it's going to be a lagging indicator, which is why I think this move is quite curious right here, because I tend to believe that this the having is being front ran right now. And simply because I don't think that after the having, are we going to continue this price action up to 250K? I don't think that's going to happen by December 2024. Now, I could be wrong, but in my opinion, I just think with the economic risk ahead of us, that's unlikely. <clears throat> so let's dive into the inflation data because the inflation data came in 0.4% higher than normal. And if we go to the stocks, we can see that we had quite a bad day in the stocks. Now, why would inflation data 
have such a red day in the stocks. So I previously talked about this and it's because it has to do with the interest rates. In order to bring inflation down, the, the only way the Fed can do that is by raising interest rates. And so they've raised interest rates and inflation is starting to go back up. So if we go over to into the cryptoverse and look at some of those inflation charts, and if we look at inflation year over year, we can see that it's starting to come back up. And so I think the stocks are getting worried that if we go back to the interest rates, the Fed cannot cut because if they cut, they're going to reignite inflation. Now, the counter argument is, is that they're going to lower rates or they're going to cut rates because it's a, an election year and we don't want to go into recession. It's not that simple, in my opinion, because if they cut too soon and we go into more of an inflationary period, that's just as worse, in my opinion, as a recession. Just because we're in an election year, I don't necessarily think that's going to affect the Fed's decision making because the last four out of five recessions did occur during election years. And so in my mind, I think that they don't want inflation and they also don't want a recession. And so with inflation going up, I tend to think that a recession is almost inevitable at this point because they simply can't cut rates as, as quickly as they wanted to. The reason I bring this up is because in large macro moves, Bitcoin and the S&P are very correlated. And so I know that a lot of people think that a move like this or like this or even this won't ever happen again. And that's just not the case. This is crypto. We pay for the volatility to the upside, which means we also get the volatility to the downside. Longer term, I think it might smooth out, but I still think that we've been pretty lucky to not have any really extreme volatility to the downside since really October of 2022 or September of 2022. And so I think with the exception of the caveat would be is that most altcoins continue to go down until um, September 2023. But for the most part, I think we've been pretty lucky, meaning we haven't seen a very big correction at all. And if we remove the drawings, this is the longest green monthly candles we've had in a row for Bitcoin. So we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've never had seven green monthly candles in a row before for Bitcoin. So I think that's pretty impressive. And I think we've been pretty lucky so far. If we go over to the social risk metric, and this is similar to the Bitcoin search trends, and we'll actually bring that up as well. So I always like to look at Bitcoin search trends in the worldwide category and generally the past five years. I think this really gives us a good picture of what's going on. And so Bitcoin in the first week of March was at around a 53. And it's since come down now to about a 30. So almost a 50% correction in the interest over time numerical value. Now, the one thing I do want to look at is the all time because that was still trending up. And so if that has started trending down again, I think that's going to be very interesting. And yep, it has started trending back down. So it went as high as 42 and it's come back down to 29. So I tend to think the interest is starting to fade across crypto right now. A lot of it has to do with the unemployment rate continuing to go up. We got a good print, I think last month, uh, it did go down a little bit, but it's still been in a pretty nice uptrend. And I think I have it on the charts over here. Uh, yeah, unemployment rate. Yeah. So this is another thing that I think is concerning is that this is been in an uptrend for a while and i think that's important to note because if you don't have a job you're not going to be trading meme coins i mean maybe maybe you are and good for you if that's the case but if you don't have a job are you really going to be speculating in crypto or are you going to be saving your money to pay your bills and so i think as this continues to rise it's going to i think put more strain 
on the overall markets and not just crypto, but the stock market as well. I think if we go back to this chart, it's starting to show that interest is fading. Now, I very much think that in late 2025 to 2026, we're probably going to, and this is probably a bold call, but I think that we're going to set a new 100. And so this is all relative, and I think we're going to have more interest in Bitcoin than we will in this 2017 crash, or not crash, in the 2017 rally. And I think another, I always... I also like to look at it in uh, just America or just the US because I think that also gives us some some good indication and the US is clearly a lot less interested in Bitcoin than worldwide. It rallied off of a numerical value of nine and went up to a 28 and it started to come back down to 19. So. I think this is also evident in the social risk. Now I've got, I turned off the Twitter analyst exchanges and L1s because I think YouTube views and YouTube subscribers are a more accurate metric because I think the first place people go when they're, if you're retail to come into crypto is, is probably YouTube. I think once you get involved in YouTube a little bit, then you kind of go off into crypto Twitter, but I think crypto Twitter is kind of very hectic and very niche for more of the experienced crypto personnel. And so I tend to look at YouTube subscribers and YouTube views to really get an idea of when I think retail is, is going to come back. <clears throat> and in my mind with such a big rejection off of this level right here, I think it's pretty interesting to look at. I mean, it it's definitely correlated with the interest over time numerical value. Now, how closely correlated is again up for debate, but I think um, it's there's definitely some similarities between the interest over time numerical value indicator and the social risk. And so if we go back to Bitcoin here, we've had a decent amount of strength comparatively to, I think, the markets. Now, this day was a a nice green day for for Bitcoin. However, it was a red day in the markets. And so I think it's going to be interesting to watch this next candle because and so if the markets are weak again tomorrow, what what is that going to do for Bitcoin? Because I think eventually if the markets start a larger downtrend, it's inevitable that Bitcoin, I think, will as well, even though yesterday it appeared that we had lost correlation with the S&P. It was simply one day. And I think if this red is going to continue in the s p i think it it will probably become more evident that that's likely to happen in bitcoin now the one thing i want to look at is the uh tether market cap because the tether market cap started going uh printing pretty crazy numbers the other day where the first week of april it jumped from 104 billion up to 106 billion so the first week of april we printed another uh two billion tethers in in the market and so i think i think you can really only print tethers so much until you risk putting pressure on the peg of the actual tether um and so eventually i think we'll have tether stall out in market cap because this can't go up forever there's going to be periods of stalling out or correcting simply because that's the natural progression of this chart but i do think it will continue to go up and so if we overlay bitcoin here we can see that it's generally pretty correlated uh but there are times where during a correction we can see in the background here that Tether market cap is continuing to grow. And so it generally stalled out. So it, it's a good, I think, lagging indicator. Once it kind of stalls out or goes down, I think it's pretty clearly that that's all she wrote. Because if we see here, this was the peak, but we continue to grow even after this larger correction until we uh, until Tether like pretty sold off pretty hard. And so if we look at the correlation now, we're 
pretty much in line with what's going on. And so I think if Bitcoin's going to roll over here, I think there's a chance that the tether market cap can continue to grow for some time. <clears throat> so I'll also be looking at that as well. Now we can go over to the Bitcoin dominance here and let's remove Bitcoin chart. And we can see that nothing's really, I mean, it looks like we've started to break out of this little triangle that I had here. Yeah, and actually this looks like it's going to break out violently here. Uh, <laughs> this week or the next week. So this is going to be something to watch because when this happens, ETH BTC will most likely break down and it's coming back down to this lower part of the range here that we highlighted yesterday. And when that happens and if it breaks down, I'm telling you right now, these altcoins are going to be in a heap of trouble. Catching knives. I no longer catch knives. I do not DCA altcoins. So careful out there. But it's it's something that it's something that you need to be aware of if you've made life-changing money in altcoins change your life i i think the upside in the altcoin market is probably limited and i mean if we see bitcoin rally i think some altcoins might continue to rally but i think for the most part bitcoin will probably outperform altcoins and that's evident, I think, in the altcoin season index, how this is starting to come back down. So with that being said, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.